What's going on guys, your favorite uneducated YouTuber here, and oh my god, this situation continues getting better and better by the day. Battlefield 5 is officially delayed until November 20th. Yes, you heard me right. The game has been pushed back a month as a result of the terrible pre-order numbers, but DICE and EA won't dare to admit that one to you. Do you know what this tells me, though, is that EA has little to no confidence in Battlefield 5 whatsoever to perform well on its own merits, and basically needs it to be released in its own kind of window with really only Fallout 76 to contest with. The entire situation surrounding this game just keeps getting worse and worse for our friends at DICE and EA, with now the stock price of EA suffering a major drop in value on the news of this delay for Battlefield 5 and some very bad news regarding the expected earnings of EA for the physical year. A quick recap though for those who might not be quite up to date with the recent events surrounding Battlefield 5. A week or so back we initially heard that pre-order sales for Battlefield 5 were quote unquote weak, which was prefaced by the resignation of Chief Design Officer Patrick Soderlund. You know, the guy who in one sentence insulted fans calling them uneducated and then in the very next sentence told us to either accept it or don't buy the game, while white knighting for some bullshit story surrounding his daughter wanting to play as a female in a World War II shooter. Shortly after that, it was revealed that Battlefield 5's pre-order numbers were over 85% lower than Black Ops 4's pre-orders, and EA was having to come up with contingency plans in the event that Battlefield 5 lopped like Titanfall 2. This, of course, only added far more weight to the idea that Patrick Soderlund was indeed told to resign or he would be fired considering he was largely responsible for the design decisions surrounding Battlefield 5 that sparked the initial controversy and then of course he threw jet fuel on the flames of outrage by calling unsatisfied Battlefield fans uneducated and then told them to not buy the game advice it seems like most people took and that's why we're here in this situation so here we are and EA has officially delayed the game by a month to try and brace for what could very well be the biggest flop in the history of the company from one of their largest and most well-established franchises. In a statement by Oscar Gabrielson, the general manager of DICE, he broke the news of the delay of Battlefield 5 and announced the new release date of November 20th, so let's take a look at his statement. Today we're announcing that Battlefield 5 will have a new launch date, November 20th, 2018. I wanted to give you a little bit of insight into how we arrived at this new date. Are you maybe going to mention that your competition that's launching around the same time is currently wiping the floor with you in pre-order numbers? Over the summer, we've had tens of thousands of players get their hands on the game during our closed alphas and at E3 and Gamescom, where we were honored to receive the awards for best multiplayer game at both shows. That's because your only real competition in that category is Black Ops 4, and that game is garbage. You've told us that you're seeing an increased focus on squad play come through. You're also feeling the difference in our revamped player movement, and we're getting a lot of positive feedback for our improved weapons handling. You've also spurred us to make some meaningful improvements to the core gameplay experience, including adjusting gameplay tempo, improving soldier visibility, and reducing player friction. You'll see a lot of these reflected in our open beta that starts on September 6th. We believe we have one of the best Battlefield games ever on our hands, a game that will deliver on an emotional journey through the return of unseen single-player war stories, a deep multiplayer experience, Battle Royale, along with our new live service, Tides of War, a journey across multiple theaters of World War II and designed to keep our community together. Keep the community together, now that is ironic. With the open beta just around the corner, we are excited about the millions of you who will join us and experience the game and we fully expect to see even more feedback coming our way. Oh, you better believe I'm excited too. And that's why we're moving our launch date. We're going to take the time to continue to make some final adjustments to the core gameplay and to ensure that we really deliver on the potential of Tides of War. We know moving the launch date means that we'll all have to wait a little longer, but we're gonna take our time and make sure we get it right. Thank you for your continued passion and support. We can't wait to see you on the battlefield in just a few days. You can smell the bullshit from this statement over a mile away. Who the hell do they think they're fooling saying that they delayed the game in order to change the core gameplay two months before the game actually launches? Now, at face value, you may think, oh, they delayed the game in order to make it a better experience for us, the consumer. That's a good thing, right? And yes, I completely agree. The game will most certainly launch in a better state as a result of this delay. So I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing for gamers, other than the fact that it will anger some fans of the series because, you know, they were looking forward to the game, they had a concrete release date, and it is obvious that EA is delaying this game in order to dodge the release date of Red Dead Redemption 2 and Black Ops 4 in a desperate attempt to boost pre-order numbers at the last minute. It. So I can see why some fans would be kind of pissed off. They were told the game would be coming out this day, 
and EA is moving it back for no other reason other than to make more money. So that's the only negative I can really think of for gamers on this. But on the other hand, this is all negative for EA, and it adds some serious weight behind the reports that pre-orders for Battlefield 5 are indeed critically low compared to both Red Dead Redemption 2 and Black Ops 4, so much so that they had to purposefully delay their largest game of the year and the latest entry in one of EA's largest franchises in order to basically stop the bleeding as much as possible to desperately avoid Battlefield 5 turning into an even worse flop than Titanfall 2 was. The situation surrounding Battlefield 5 is having a monumental effect on EA as a whole in terms of their financial outlook for the remainder of the physical year. But don't just take my word for it, here's an article from CNBC which goes into some details. Shares of Electronic Arts plunged more than 6% at market open Thursday after the game maker announced it's delaying the release of Battlefield 5 by a month and adjusted its full year guidance to reflect the lower sales. The next iteration of EA's popular Battlefield series will now launch on November 20th, the company said in a release. That distances the release from some of the other highly anticipated game launches like Activision Blizzard's Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and Take-Two's Red Dead Redemption 2, both set to launch in October. Analysts for Cohen had previously forecast weak numbers for Battlefield 5, saying its original release date would have made the title the casualty of the crowded October window. The delay also lowers the company's expected net bookings for fiscal year 2019 to 5.2 billion from 5.5 billion. So as soon as this news broke, the stock price of EA fell 6% as a direct result of this delay for Battlefield 5, but it didn't just stop right there. Currently, EA stock has dropped just under 10% in the wake of this news over the delay of Battlefield 5. The real killer, though, in all of this for EA is the fact that they had to lower their expected revenue for the fiscal year. That is the thing that EA prides themselves on and always meeting or exceeding. Let's just do the math here, okay? They had to lower their physical year revenue by about $350 million. Now divide that by $60 per game, and that gives us an idea of just how bad this could be. EA could potentially be losing out on 5.8 million copies of the game sold compared to what they initially expected. Now, in reality, this calculation is probably much more complicated. It takes into account the deluxe edition upcharges, the microtransaction purchases, and of course, other games in their portfolio. But this gives you a good general idea of what exactly is happening here and the financial implications that this could have for EA as a company. Even with the numerous controversies surrounding their games in the past, Battlefront 2 included, they have always continuously been able to meet, if not exceed, expectations year after year and increase their profitability at the same time. This is a drastic departure from that trend and is a sign that EA may not be as safe from controversy as many have thought and proves that they have done what looks like to be irreparable damage to their reputation among gamers. Not only are they not going to exceed expectations, but they had to lower them before the game even released, suggesting that EA knows the outlook for Battlefield 5 is anything but positive at this point. This was supposed to be the game that carried them through the holiday season and made them a ton of money like almost every other Battlefield game has done in the past. Not only did they have to swallow their pride and change the release date of their biggest AAA game release of the year that always launches in October, I might add, but they even had to lower their entire company's earnings expectations as a direct result of this. That is a sign that EA is in some deep shit here. Even now, dodging the release of both Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption 2, I think the damage is done at this point. At this point, I just can't help but laugh, because they've brought this on themselves at every given opportunity. They politicized a beloved franchise from the very beginning, from their choice to prominently feature women in the reveal trailer and on the cover for a World War II shooter, and to have a politically divisive personality like Trevor Noah host the reveal event. Then in the aftermath, where many voiced their complaints, often in a respectful manner, with the exception, of course, of the crazies which are present in any online argument, you attacked your fans and virtue signaled your higher morality. First, it was Alan Kurtz saying he'd be on the quote, right side of history for including women in the game, and that he stands up for the cause of ending male domination in the gaming industry. Then came the recently resigned Patrick Soderlund calling all who dared to question his design choices by pointing out basic facts about World War II uneducated and telling them to either accept it or do not buy the game. Even more recently, we had some clown from DICE come out whose name I don't even remember because I honestly don't care and say that he wished they had put even more women in Battlefield. 
DICE and EA seem to have one hell of a self-destructive tendency when it comes to this game for whatever reason. If they had just kept their mouths shut and let the initial backlash fade into nothing and let the gameplay speak for itself, we would not be here today talking about this. Like I said in my previous video, Activision was put in this exact same situation with Call of Duty World War II, where they added female combatants and character customization to a World War II shooter. What did Activision do to combat the backlash? Absolutely nothing. They carried on like it didn't exist. They didn't virtue signal, they didn't insult their fans, they didn't claim to be fighting against male domination, they didn't explain anything in terms of their reasoning any further than saying, this is what we wanted to do with our game. And guess what? Crisis completely averted. EA had this example at the very beginning, but they just couldn't resist opening their mouths and look how well it turned out for them. Their situation is one that no one would ever want to be in. They've catered only to a small portion of their consumer base through their design choices and with the subsequent attacks on disgruntled fans, and it turns out that consumer base they appealed to is not necessarily supporting the game as much as they might have thought. Big surprise there, SJWs don't buy games, how many times do we have to say it? And of course, when there are far better, less polarizing options like Red Dead Redemption and of course the annual juggernaut Call of Duty launching around you, it's not going to be a pretty sight. Delaying the game was the only move EA can make at this point if they have any hopes of salvaging what little they can from the upcoming disastrous launch of Battlefield 5. It shows their overall lack of confidence surrounding their game because in a typical year, Battlefield has no problem launching within a week of Call of Duty and surrounded by other big hitters. October is no stranger to big game releases. So to just kind of wrap this up, because it feels like I'm honestly beating a dead horse when it comes to Battlefield 5 at this point, do I think this game is going to flop? No, it won't flop by definition. It'll still sell millions of copies on every single platform it's released on. But do I think this could be one of the worst selling mainline entries in the Battlefield franchise of recent history? Absolutely. I think that's going to be the situation we're going to see happen with Battlefield 5. And that's going to be the problem that EA is going to have to deal with when it comes to their shareholders. Because shareholders only care about one thing, and that's making as much money as humanly possible. And if EA's management is squandering a money-making opportunity like Battlefield 5, there is going to be hell to pay, and EA's management is going to be in the middle of a shitstorm, I can tell you that. If news of a delay dropped EA stock by 10%, there is definitely some stuff happening behind the scenes that we are not quite aware of. And this game could really be in a bad spot. Like that 85% estimate lower than Call of Duty's pre-order numbers could be completely spot on and this game could in fact flop harder than Titanfall. It is going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. I say let Battlefield 5 fail and let it be a message to the industry that when you basically give the middle finger to your loyal fans, you know, the ones who gave you the success you have today, that your game should fail and is going to fail. Remember, we the customers are EA's true boss. Without us buying the games they put out, they are absolutely nothing. I will not be supporting this game in any way financially, but I don't fault those who want to play the game still. Like I always say, it's your money and it's your decision how you want to spend it, so go for it if the game appeals to you. But honestly though, it feels good to watch this all unfold the way it has and I can't think of anyone more worthy of it to happen to than good old electronic arts. But anyway guys, let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section. Hit the like button if you enjoyed and consider subscribing for future videos like this one. Follow me on Twitter at Griffin underscore gaming or click the link in the description. Join my Discord link in the description for that as well. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. The recent support has been absolutely incredible and I will catch you guys next time.